Well, Art the Clown is finally headlining his own game after previously appearing in Call of Duty. Yep. So, Kelly, what's what's your fandom level of Art the Clown as a character? Um, so I'm a fan. So let me kind of, kind of start there. Uh, but I have not seen any of the, the terror terrifier movies yet. So I'm I'm remiss to say. Seems like a good time during this season to address that. But I have seen art a lot in YouTube shorts and on TikTok and all of that. And we'll watch those scenes and I'm like, wow, this looks like it'd be pretty fun to watch <laughs> to see the extended thing. Possibly the creepiest, a, a very creepy, creepy clown. So so uh, big fan, not as familiar with his work as I'd, I'd like to be. Uh, and you? Uh, fan. Um, we went to see Terrifier 3 on our uh, anniversary. Like you do. That was the, kicking it off. <laughs> went to breakfast and went to an early showing of Terrifier 3. Uh, so Terrifier 3 is the fourth feature film <laughs> that Art the Clown appears in. Um, so the character originated in 2008 in a short film called Ninth Circle. There was a follow-up short film called Terrifier. Then his first feature film is All Hallows Eve. There are sequels to All Hallows Eve, but they don't feature Art the Clown. Uh, he got his own spinoff in the feature film Terrifier, which now has two sequels to it as well. So the character's gotten around pretty well. Um, he also appeared in Pete Davidson's TV show, which I've never watched, so... But the character appears in there. Uh, you will notice that there's a distinct change in the character from the short films and All Hallows Eve to the first Terrifier. And that is they switched actors who portrayed him. And it's it makes a gigantic difference in them. Originally, it was the a friend of the creators who hated it, apparently, <laughs> from interviews and things. Because uh, it's a long makeup process and very involved. And I think he was just kind of doing it as a favor. And not, you know, wasn't really into the six hour makeup process or whatever it was doing it. So he was happy to pass the reins off to somebody else who it's now the character now has been played by David Howard Thornton, who is a professional mime and does a lot with the character. So what's interesting about it as a horror fan is that the character has become so popular and that's really what's driven the series um, so for anybody, if you've seen the character and you're not really sure why, if you're not a big slasher movie fan, uh, the movies. <clears throat> so the character was popular in All Hallows Eve, but All Hallows Eve wasn't like a huge commercial success or anything. And even the first Terrifier, if I remember correctly, when it came out, just kind of did OK. It was word of mouth from there that it really started to build a following because fans have really adopted the character and really pushed it forward. Terrifier 2 became a huge sort of cultural milestone because it made $15 million in its theatrical release. That's a huge deal because the movie cost about $250,000 to make, which is the budget of some videos that I've made and some of the movies that I've worked on. And that made $15 million theatrically. For perspective, that's a bigger profit margin than any Marvel movie has ever had for anybody to understand that. So compared budget to and marketing to what the movie made, that is more profitable than every single Marvel movie ever has been. And then Terrifier 3 is even bigger so far. It's up to, at the time we're recording this, almost 45 million in two and a half weeks or something into its run. And a big, a big part of why that's a big deal in addition to the amount of money that it's making is the movies are released unrated which pre-pandemic, you couldn't get a wide theatrical release unless you went through the MPAA to have your film rated. So that's a big deal. Um, theaters realized they couldn't depend on Hollywood movies during the pandemic. So a lot of factors have really pushed this forward. And the characters appeared in a bunch of stuff, including Call of Duty, and now is getting his own video game, which I'm pretty excited about because it's a retro-style side-scrolling beat-em-up game. Just from the trailer, a lot of characters from the movies are appearing in it, um, including the pale girl, who is unfortunately not in Terrifier 3. That's not a spoiler. That's something that people know. Um, but she is in the game, so that's pretty cool. 
Uh, now, what's your excitement level as somebody who's more terrified or curious? Um, <laughs> uh, so I like it. Uh, it looks pretty fun. Uh, Chris Jericho uh, is another playable character, which yes. gives it a big bump for me. Possibly the best on mic wrestler there ever was, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Fight me on that. <laughs> but uh, in the comments, go ahead, fight me on that. Who's better than Jericho? <laughs> no one. <laughs> anyway, um, Ellie's a professional slapper, so keep that in mind. That's right. Um, good old lie counter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty excited. I did uh, a number of comments on the YouTube video. The you know, kind of hopefully through the show here, you've seen uh, some of the gameplay to get a, get a little bit of an idea of what this is all about. But there were a lot of people uh, kind of carping in the comments that oh, this is just basically a Billy Pilgrim reskin, and I'm. Again, never I didn't play it a ton, but I, I'm aware of and have seen the Billy Pilgrim game that I'm assuming they're referring to uh, on this. And uh, so I'd certainly say the the art style is, um, you know, very you know it's it's of the same universe without a doubt. But I'm hard pressed to say that the gameplay is just a reskinning of, of Billy Pilgrim, but. Uh, I don't really, I'm not obviously immersed in both games, in either game at this point. So my, what was my opinion? But at least on initial observation, I can go just because it's got a similar art art style uh, doesn't necessarily mean it's a reskin. But I don't know. Did you see any of that? Or you do you have enough familiarity with the Billy Pilgrim side of the equation to weigh in? So do you mean Scott Pilgrim? Yeah, I say Billy Pilgrim because I like Kurt Vonnegut. <laughs> so those be like this big asterisk billy, billy, billy or, or scott 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 over billy but yeah i meant scott pilgrim um, so I, I can see what they're talking about but again this like scott pilgrim is modeled the scott pilgrim game is modeled after 90s beat em up games so i mean there's there's a hundred games that are 20 30 years old now that look it's similar in style so to say it's kind of a reskin to that is a little bit weird because that itself was meant to be referencing, you know, games like Streets of Rage and Final Fight and all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, I see what they're saying, but I feel like in the broader scheme of things, it's more mimicking early '90s beat 'em up games. Right. Yeah, I'd say it's different. Enough. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, uh, it's it's gonna come out on multiple platforms, I believe. So I. Uh... Uh, I think uh, this this could be a nice switch edition from there. It looks 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 fun. I like the kind of options for playable characters on it. I think that's pretty pretty cool. Say I can mention the Jericho thing's got me pretty, and it is his name is Chris Jericho. It's not Scott Jericho. It's not Billy Jericho. It is actually Chris Jericho. <laughs> so um, so you'll be uh, excited to know that Chris Jericho appears in two of the movies. <laughs> so well, I I knew that he did in one briefly and was t- taken out pretty quick so i had had read that but uh it's good he's into him but and it's good he's in the game so yeah i'm i'm pretty pretty interested in this so i think it'll be a nice nice addition looks fun it is interesting that art the clown um you know in terms of if we want to talk about similarities i'm not seeing at least he's in the same family so are you familiar with puddles the clown yes uh, yeah wouldn't you say that they're at least cousins, you know, if you were to guess. Um, so that's, I don't know the name for it. So it's right there. <laughs> I don't know the name for it. That's a type of clown of like mime clowns. And there, there's a word for it of these like sad mime clowns. And that's the traditional, that's what they're supposed to look like. So I know that, <laughs> but I don't know the word for it. So I'm not that, I'm not that well versed in clown history. <laughs> I just know that that's a thing. <laughs> so that's where that costume is coming from. But yes, you're absolutely correct. They're both that same type of clown. Yep. And it's a shame that art's a mime because he, you know, if he could, if he had puddle singing voice, it'd be just. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, so, and this is where, and if you're intending on watching the movies, I'm not saying skip 
their earlier stuff, but it's unnecessary because Terrifier, when he gets his own spinoff movie, it starts over sort of presupposing you don't know anything that happened before that. So there, there's no actual connection other than the art, the clown character. It starts its own arc from there. So it's it's not necessary to go back and watch the short films or the anthology movie, All Hallows Eve. It's not necessary. You can if you want to be a completist, but it's it's unnecessary. But what David Howard Thornton really does, and this is where I think the popularity of the character really starts to take off, being an actual professional mime, he's not just walking around looking scary. It's a lot of physical comedy that he does, juxtaposed with the actual movie is otherwise playing it straight horror. They're not horror comedies. They're straightforward horror. So you have this very comedic, physical, slapstick comedy character in a otherwise serious, dark horror movie. And I think that's part of what people have latched onto with the character is that weird juxtaposition. Yep. I could, from the clips that I've seen, uh, uh, you can, you can definitely pick that up. So that, uh, yeah. And the original actor, again, nothing against the original actor. He was just some friend of the director doing him a favor. So it's not, he's not an actor. This is a critique of him, but he's just a guy dressed as an evil clown stalking people. It's not, it doesn't really become a character in the same way until the terrifier movie. Thank you. Cool. Well, um, we'd, uh, kind of love to hear from you folks in the comments, uh, uh, whether you think, and you can beat me up a little bit on saying Billy Pilgrim all the time. But again, <laughs> if you haven't read Breakfast of Champions by Kurt Vonnegut, you should. Uh, and uh, He did and, it on purpose just so he could plug Kurt Vonnegut but, and yeah. give him that panda bomb. There you go. Just the yeah, that, uh, yeah, a little late for him to appreciate it, but that's okay. You know, still keep it, we'll keep it around for him. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, so it'll be, it could be a lot of, a lot of additional video titles on this one <laughs> to, to get her done. But, uh, uh, I, I think I'm done talking for this show. <laughs> you have anything? No, I mean, you know, if you guys are horror movie fans, go see Terrifier 3, just because <laughs> it's, it's very important, not just for horror movies, but it's going to give a lot of people opportunities to release their projects theatrically because it is absolutely killing the MPA as an entity that can control what comes out in theaters because they are connected to the theater union. It's the exact opposite of the way unions are supposed to work. They are directly connected and control the theater unions and used to be able to control what theaters could show. And that was a way of controlling directors by putting it into their contracts of what a movie rating had to be and made it extremely difficult for things that weren't made through those unions, whether they were rated or not, to even get theatrical releases. So if you're going to take a positive thing from the pandemic, <laughs> this is unrated movies being getting wide theatrical releases in mall movie theaters and things like that. So that's important. But again, this one is even more profitable than what came before it, because I feel like with each iteration and each time the character pops up in something else, whether it's a TV show or Call of Duty, whatever it might be, the character is more well-known and more popular. Kelly knows who he is, but hasn't seen any of the movies. So, and I feel like that's a lot of people. There was somebody who came out behind us and there was a couple and one of them was not happy with the results of the movie. And the husband was like, oh, what did you, obviously the fan was like, what did you think of it? And she's like, I hated it. <laughs> He's like, why? He's like, well, I didn't see one and two, so I have no idea what was happening. That's a weird choice going into a third entry in a series with zero background other than she's like but i saw the clown character on stuff that's why i wanted to come so he's like but i don't like horror movies and i don't like stuff with a lot of violence that's a bad choice of the movie yeah yeah there's a there's a signal yeah <laughs> movie the movie <laughs> title might be a bit, <laughs> movie title and poster might be a little clue it's, it's called terrifier it's the third movie <laughs> there should be nobody leaving this movie shocked by it at this point, like this is what you're signing up for. Yep, makes sense. Well, anyway, folks, this is Kelly, Kurt Vonnegut fan, and Mike, pandemic apologist, apologist, saying, catch you next time. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>
Bug Panda.